Section 7 again has two parts. The first part is called Dragon Trap Between the Rocks. The second part is Dragon Finds His Way Out of the Cave. So we take it from the Qigong. Um, and again, I'll show you the section first and then we'll break it down. Okay, so we'll take a look at the footwork. So from our power start, we're going to turn 180 degrees. So we turn the left toes in as far as they'll go. As soon as we start to feel the torque build up, we release and let that right foot turn out. Now, as the hand comes through and pulls down, we're going to place the left heel on the circumference. As we do our elbow strike, the right heel places on the circumference. Now the hand moves across to the left. We're going to pull down a second time, place the heel on the circumference, though this time we're facing out of the circle. We step around, place the heel on the circumference. So it's from here that we start the second part of the section. So we strike down to the left. Now as the right hand comes across, we're going to pick up the left foot, turn it all the way around, place the heel on the circumference, as we strike across with the right hand. Now, we're going to turn and circle the wrist and place the right foot on the circumference. We're gonna be in this power stance. Now, as we switch back out, we're gonna shoot the left hand through, go into our dragon stance. So we need to turn the right foot 90 degrees out of the circumference and drop the weight forwards into that front leg. We then step around with the left foot, heel on the circumference. Now we can do this in two ways. We can jump or we can step. So I'll show you the step first. We're going to step back with the right foot, step forward with the left. So we're gonna find the heel, heel of the right foot on the circumference, toes of the left, okay? If you're going to jump, it's exactly the same, but you're going to have both feet in the air at the same time. So as soon as we come around to the side, we're going to let the right hand travel all the way around. As soon as we start to run out of space, we're going to pick up that right foot first, one, two, and land in that back weighted position. Okay, so if I show you that a little bit quicker so you can see how the footwork links together. Again, as I explained at the end of Qigong, you're going to drill the palms forwards and twist the fingers outwards. Now, what happens from here as we turn our body to the right, the left hand drops underneath the elbow and we push all the way through to the back. Now, as we take our step, we lift the left hand up and then we pull down as our left foot makes contact with the floor. So this is a grab and we're pulling downwards. A split second after that, we step around and we do a forwards elbow. Now we prep exactly the same movement, but we're going to go to the outside of the circle. So the left hand slides underneath and we move out to the left. Same thing happens. We pull down, we switch the foot. Now this time we're going to do a backwards elbow. So if I switch this around, as we pull down, we miss the strike in forwards, so then we elbow backwards on the return. Now, the rhythm that you're going to hit, you're going to elbow back, then strike straight down to the side. So we go one, that's the end of section A, strike down, that's the start of section B. So from here, you're gonna turn your body and you're gonna to have to release that left foot because otherwise you won't be able to turn your waist all the way around. So if I do it towards the camera, from here, we strike down. Now we push chop out to the side, but we're gonna to have to release that foot so we can turn that waist all the way around. 
Now, as we step the right foot around, we're going to circle the hand. We turn the fingers in, around, and then chop with the palm facing upwards. Now, a split second after we make contact with the right, we're going to switch that right foot out and we're going to spear the left hand straight under. Boom. So we drop straight into that dragon posture. Okay. From here, we can take our time again. So we strike through. Now the next one, we just sweep out from underneath the left arm. Right hand travels out and we turn all the way around. So if I go from here, right hand comes up, travels all the way around. Now as, again, as I said with the footwork, as soon as you feel that waist, you can't really go too much further. You're gonna feel the torque drag your body around. So as you move outwards with the right arm, that's going to pull the left foot forwards and the hands are going to drop and circle over exactly the same way that we've done it in the hawk form before. The hands come around. Because the left is moving to the front, the right's gonna strike down first, but only by like a split second. So it comes over, strike down with the right, down with the left. At the end of the Qigong, we breathe out and we strike forwards. So this is going to be your in-breath as you rise all the way up, out-breath as you pull down. The out-breath is going to continue into your elbow and only when you switch leads back over to your left hand, you start breathing in. You breathe in again, step around with the left foot, pull down on your out-breath, step around, elbow back. Now strike down before you take your next in-breath. As you turn, you can push that hand forwards and breathe in. This is still on your in-breath as you step around and chop. And now as you switch out, that's going to be your out-breath. Now when we step around with the left foot, this is going to be your in-breath. The right hand goes underneath the arm. We sweep out. And now your out breath, as you jump switch the feet, you land with the left forwards and you breathe out. Section number eight loosely translates to dragonflies in the sky. Um, it's a collection of more athletic postures and it's more for body conditioning and health than it is for self-defense. Uh, I'd like to say at this point that the majority of the postures as they are set in the form will be no good for self-defense you need to work them slightly differently to try to get that combat application out of them. Um, but in terms of generic workouts, this is really good because if you can do the more extravagant postures, it means that your athleticism and your flexibility is just a little bit better. So I'll just show you, uh, I'll just show you the section and then we'll go through and we'll cover the footwork and the hand positions. We're going to lean back, we're going to kick forwards. Now in the more dynamic version of this, you're going to start your second kick before your first kick lands. So you're going to kick this one up and as this one drops, you can hop and then start your second kick. But that's going to go all the way around, plant the heel on the circumference and then the hands just pass underneath each other. So we're back into this kind of walking position. We're then going to jump switch the feet. So the left comes back, right goes forwards, and then we slip off the front foot and begin to walk the circle. This first posture, again, is, is pretty crazy. I mean, the idea is that this hand is supposed to make it all the way down onto the floor and you're supposed to be in a bridge position with a kick out to the front. Um, if that's not, if that's not difficult enough, you then have to, uh, in the same movement, jump out of it into your next kick. So we have to make some improvisations because I certainly don't have that flexibility and I don't have that ability to then even lead it into the next kick. So what's going to happen is we're going to go into that back bend. We're going to get all the same attributes, obviously not to the same extent, 
but we're going to lean back, we're going to put our back into extension, we're going to lean, the hand's going to be up over the head, so if I stand forward, your hand wants to be at least higher than your eyebrows, okay? This movement is going to allow that back bend and that leg to lift up higher. Obviously, if you throw the hand up and kick, your foot's going to go a lot higher, but again, be careful because you can pull hamstrings and things like that. So once you go up, your right hand's gonna push down to the side. This is going to be your centering hand. So as you kick, the leg's gonna come forwards. Now, because this is predominantly a kicking section, you're going to just use the hands to balance. So as you jump onto your left foot and perform that right roundhouse kick, you're just going to use the hands to keep that balance so you can perform those kicks without falling over. So we go all the way round. As soon as our foot locates that circumference, the left hand's going to circle under the right, and then it slides out, both palms are up. Now from here, we're going to just drop the hands, circle them out. Because our right hand's going to take over the lead, the right hand's gonna strike last. So we come around and out, left one pulls it in towards the dantian and we strike down closer to the body and then the second one is going to strike just a split second afterwards down in front of the body. Now from here, the right hand and left hand circle outwards, right feeds under left and then we slip forward and begin to walk the circle. Again, this section is going to be tricky with the breathing because we're performing such, such big athletic movements. So best thing to do is to kind of hone it in or reel it back just a little bit. Try to practice the attributes without going to full extension. And then you can practice these out of the form and then bring them back in. So as we finish the end of section seven, the left hand's forwards. So we're on our out breath. We lean in, we breathe in, we kick forwards with the left leg. Now, we're gonna take our time with that one, so then we can make the right kick a bit more dynamic. So we jump forwards onto that left foot, kick around, this is gonna be our out breath. So we kick and spin. And then as we come around, we continue that out breath all the way through to the end of the next posture. Now we can take a little bit more time as we change steps. So we drop the hands, we breathe in, expand through the chest, bring the left foot back, right foot forwards. We drop down. Now, as we circle the hands, we breathe out. And then as the hand comes up and over, we're gonna breathe in. So we breathe in, we slip that right foot around and then breathe out on the first step. Okay, you then follow the regular breathing qigong all the way around the circumference until you finish with your right foot forwards and then you're going to step the left foot up, breathe out and then you're ready to start side number two.